Hey guys, Crux here with SinShop. So the next step in Project Nomad is to uh, basically start hacking into the wheelchair uh, motor controller. Uh, we have to uh, basically pull out the control lines for the H bridges, uh, pull out power, and pull out the ability to trigger the, the relay that is actually you know, engages and disengages power to the motors. Once we have that, then uh, we'll be able to uh, actually look at the signal lines and, and see what signal we actually have to send to the H-Bridge uh, controllers. One of the safeties uh, I discovered is that it won't actually run the motors if the, uh, if the, the case uh, to the wheelchair motor controller is open. Um, so that's why we have to actually solder in all the lines and get it all hooked up and, and then from there we can put it back together and actually probe uh, what's being sent to the H bridges and, and uh, replicate that or collect that data so then we can replicate it and drive that via our microcontroller of choice. In this instance, I'm going to use uh, Arduino just because it's quick, cheap, and I happen to have them on hand. In this case, uh, DEF CON is coming up here really quick, so we don't have a whole lot of time. In the future, though, since the Arduino is AVR based, um, we can easily uh, change out the, the, the microcontroller to you know, pure AVR code if, if we so choose.
I know I'm using my laptop currently. Using the laser cutter to make work easier? That's crazy talk. getting the PP running. That was all in like that bag. Yes. It was a black hat bag. Right. 
I don't know if it's still in there. Just hook up the regular terminal and just type uh, boot sequence. Oh, that's a lot of work though. <laughs> I don't know if it will actually, I don't know if I can actually boot to that terminal. <clears throat> well, I was just joking, but. <laughs> question is, we're going to start looking for that. Because I don't, don't see it in... Wait. No. Maybe. That's not a black hat bag, but it has cables in it. So here we have the motor going, here we have the motor going uh, forward 
um, we're looking at the uh, primary and secondary uh, controller in there and you'd see that uh, we have a, a time period of 51.2 microseconds um, when it slows down it looks like um, it actually turns on both channels at the uh, slower speed All right. once it gets up to a certain speed then it ends up using just the one channel um, so the, the top is uh, the number two trace is for forward and the number one trace is for reverse locked on the reverse and it basically does the uh, the opposite now on reverse on the wheelchair it doesn't uh, to as fast of a speed. So it looks like we're getting a approximately six microsecond pulse. back over to channel one so full speed we're at about a 16 microsecond pulse and there's capturing when it's using a uh, both motors at once so it looks like it's running the so it looks like it's running the forward and then the backwards not not quite as long so looking at the Reverse pulse, we got 10.8 microseconds. Forward pulse, 14 microseconds. And then the full time period is 50.8 microseconds. Fifty one point two. Hmm. There we have sixteen microseconds for forward. And you see right there is where it triggers into doing the uh, double mode. So we, can get, uh, so we won't see any pulses below 3.6 microseconds.
you pretty much absolutely have to have an oscilloscope for doing things like this because it allows you to capture the waveform and see exactly what it's doing. <laughs> 